when I talk of the pandemic to come, people might think I'm talking about a second wave. I'm not. Talking about what the experts say, and I've read it, I think, in the New Statesman as well as in the Spectator, so in the traditional political analysis, that's from the left. The experts on the left and the experts on the right, if experts have a um, political bias. <laughs> um, there are other pandemics to come. And, of course, it's 100 years since the Spanish flu and COVID-19 is not a flu, it's a coronavirus. I didn't know what a coronavirus was um, and how that differed from an influenza. But um, I still couldn't really give a proper talk on that. On that. So there's a lot I don't know. But I get the growing impression that we have reached the limits to growth without um, there being many other um, pandemics and ecological consequences of our actions. Um, the guy who wrote about population the other day, um, who, I mean, I put his film on here the other day, not his film, I read out his piece in the New Statesman on a film on this channel the other day. Surname begins with E. Anyhow, you can find you can find that. It's got a little picture on it on my YouTube channel with um, population something on his face on the left hand side of a double page photo of a double page from the New Statesman. He doesn't have the confidence that Greta Thunberg has that uh, this is a, this is a time when people are going to change their behaviour. I think from what I see, I'm with him on that. Um, I had a friend who, well, I'll say whose wife acknowledged that all I've been saying about rebuilding community and sharing more um, was actually right and she hadn't acknowledged that before in nine years of me uh, nine years since I founded the St Leonard's Sharing Consortium acknowledging it is one thing doing something about it is something is something else and I don't <coughs> I don't think that people get it I mean a friend the husband of this particular woman has uh, lost his job due to, well, you could say due to COVID-19, we could say due to the government's response to COVID-19. I'm not going to say that the government's response was irresponsible. I think it's not clearly focused and it was too late because we don't listen to protesters enough. If I want to get into conversations with people about protesters, there are three examples I use. Extinction Rebellion and the press blockade. Pause the system on the 16th of March and how that was listened to or not. It was a week late in being listened to it. So um, I really think that what one said about pause the system on 16th of March is a measure of um, one's credibility in terms of being able to listen to protesters in a timely way if they're talking sense. So if you didn't say pause the system, I, um, I'm a little bit less open to hearing... Uh, your criticism of Extinction Rebellion uh, blocking the press. Similarly, if you weren't on the march, um, or, or uh, yeah, if, if you weren't on the march in 2003, 15th of February, was it? Presuming you were, you were over 18 then, um, on it, to do with uh, Tony Blair being about to launch a war in Iraq, the consequences of which have been horrendous and are still playing out. We get some ripples, but only slight ripples, in the form of migration. We don't get the real brunt of what happened What happened there. But we were all responsible in that we allowed a government to do this. We needed to be far more effective in withholding our taxes at that time uh, in order to stop the, the war from happening. Um, so peace tax campaigns need to be supported. Uh, protesters who are, who are saying, pause the system and... Um, that the press isn't telling the truth about climate. They need to be listened to, in my opinion. Um, and I agree, as I say, not with Greta Thunberg, that, that um, well, as described by this guy in the New Statesman, when he says that she thinks this is, this is a great opportunity uh, for the world to open... COVID-19 is a great opportunity for the world to open up and change its ways. I agree when he says it's unlikely that that the general uh, view is we've got to rebuild the economy and an a massive opportunity missed to address the structural issues that need to be addressed. So um, 
yeah, the evidence of this is a friend buying a, t a new phone. I don't see anyone else other than myself putting the case for something other than a consumerist approach to buying a phone. There are many phones in the community available for, for use. Um, some will, have been, will be in the community in the form of being in a shop, a second-hand shop. But why anyone, given what's just happened in the world, would add to the unethical purchase of a new phone and put that in the equation is um, it's not beyond me it's just it just greatly saddens me that people aren't rethinking their consumerist habits and seeking community solutions um, there's I mean the old Gandhi phrase comes up there's enough in the world for everyone's need but not for everyone's greed find solutions that are universalizable to use the Kantian imperative rather than oh isn't that nice let's have that sorry outmoded and very dangerous attitudes.